uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. I know we're running late in the day here for you, and uh, hopefully you had great sessions all through the night. Um, I'm just going to share my screen here. Presentation mode. Okay, so um, like Niraj said, I am the CEO of Demetra Technologies. Uh, Demetra Technologies is a global agriculture technology company. We uh, currently have people in about 47 countries in the world and we're growing quite rapidly um, all over Asia, Africa, Middle East, North America and South America at the moment, and we're just starting to enter into Europe. Um, I've been building technology for about 25 years, and the last few years I've been running a company in Canada called Blockchain Guru. Uh, we do training, consulting, and software development. I uh, have a company called Crypto Systems, and we do crypto um, products and uh, and new is Demetra Incorporated. Um, one of the reasons I started with Demetra Incorporated um, has been a lot of the work that I've done in the agriculture and food chain throughout my career, but also um, I grew up on a farm and was active farming as a child. Um, I guess as I grew, I wanted to move to the city and did that, went and moved to the city and and now as an adult, I'm back on uh, back on a farm, just moving back to a farm now. My family is very active in the farming business. Um, also want to make an announcement that later today, we're actually launching our Demetra token. So you can go to our website if you'd like to learn more about that or read the white paper. The Demetra technology platform is a platform that we put on mobile and we put on web and we do on-premises implementations. And uh, we're implementing this at a number of governments around the world and driving into the millions of farmers using the platform. The two sides that we kind of divide our, our technology into is the data-driven farmer side, which is our base platform. It's really targeted at smallholder farmers or farmers in general. Um, allows farmers to register their farm and uh, work with their crops, their poultry, their livestock, um, work on a marketplace and gain access to a whole bunch of knowledge um, through our knowledge garden. And then we have advanced tech mo modules, which typically um, we sell to governments or large corporations. We've got satellite imaging, and drones, uh, finance, you know, so for banks and microfinancing and lenders and sensor management and just a number of technologies. And you can always find out more on our website. Today, I actually wanted to talk about a couple of use cases for blockchain. And a number of years ago, I put together a identity platform. We use Quorum blockchain in order to do that. Um, we've since rebuilt that technology and it was really focused initially at identifying humans. Um, two years ago, I had an opportunity to do an identity project relative to livestock. And, and it's interesting, we're working in a lot of countries now um, and there's unique livestock challenges in various countries. One of the countries that we're really focused on in East Africa has a problem with cattle rustling. And it's a real world problem. They lose hundreds of thousands of cattle per year to cattle rustlers, mostly through organized crime. Um, people will come with a truck to, uh, to a farm or um, through pastoral pharmacists farmers um, and actually take those cattle, um, drive them literally 10 kilometers down the road, you know, 
tear off the RFID tags, obscure the brands on the cattle, and sell that cow as their own. You know, fake documentation is very easy for them to produce. And I think countries have been struggling with solving this for quite a while. Within our application, we have a, a registration site where you can register the birth of a new cow or if you purchase a, a new piece of livestock, uh, register that livestock. And, and there's a couple solutions that we offer that help solve these challenges. So the first thing we do is we protect all of that data on blockchain, um, all of the personal farmer data, all of the uh, individual animal registration data, it's all encrypted on a blockchain. The next thing we do is we look at two different technologies. One of them is um, a sensor-based technology or a tag-based technology, which can be placed be underneath the skin of the animal or in the rumen. Um, so essentially in the stomach of the cow. And that bolus sensor can actually float there as an identifier for the animal. And it solves the challenge of when uh, a farm has their cattle stolen with the identification of those cattle. So we have an encrypted identification uh, written on the tag and recorded in a national blockchain program. And what that allows is at each abattoir, at each market, at each border crossing, um, we can actually have antennas that will identify all the cattle that come into the area or ones that a individual could wave in front of the cow uh, to pick up the reading of the cow's identity. And through an automated fashion, we can connect back to that individual farmer or the authorities to identify that this cow is now at a, a marketplace or a sale yard and who owns that animal. The identity of the animal then can be verified against the, the documentation, which may be true or fake that was brought to sell the animal. And there can be a verification via text or via email or uh, a call if an individual wants to receive a call if any of their cattle show up at a sale yard, at an abattoir, or at a border crossing. The other alternative we have now is a nose print, and, and we've been working with a company in South America that's made a, a great nose print tool where you can use a, a phone or a tablet, <clears throat> take a picture of the nose of the animal. And a nose print operates very similarly to a fingerprint. And it, it does take, um, the ability to get in closer proximity to the animal to va validate a nose print, but it is a cheaper solution. And in a lot of markets, a cheaper solution is uh, the most practical solution just due to budgets that are available with farmers. So you can take a quick picture of the nose and we can compare that nose print and validate um, on the blockchain which animal it is. and uh, again, follow the same features from the perspective of uh, identifying that with the owner. So, you know, fairly simple process. Um, you know, you just need to get a good picture of, of the nose of the animal. Um, fairly easy to do. It does take a little practice and it, it does take getting in close proximity to the animal in order to take the nose print. So not as simple as standing, you know, meters away um, with a scanner or picking it up on an antenna. The other alternative is using uh, what we call a bolus sensor. And I, I mentioned the bolus sensor. The bolus sensor is actually 
a sensor that we can take and insert into the rumen of the cow. We can do a lot of things with a bolus sensor and there's pros and cons to bolus. Um, I think bolus is a strong technology in areas that you have a lot of cattle theft, um, but it is a, a more expensive technology. And some of the other challenges in, in North America, they don't love bolus sensors when they're processing cattle at a meat production plant. Um, they have to retrieve those bolus or they can get caught up in the equipment. So there's pros and cons to the technology. In a, an area of high cattle theft, um, it is an identity that stays with the cow. Um, and it's not incredibly difficult to read. There's some other things we can do with BOLA sensors around temperature and pH of the stomach, um, which will help with um, disease and illness detection. Um, we can set up alerts on that as well. So we can add a few, few benefits and they're not all that difficult to put in an animal. Um, let me just share my screen here. So, you know, this is a, this is an animal on a, on a farm here in Alberta. Essentially you have a wand, you put it in the throat and hit a trigger and it now floats in the rumen of the stomach for the life of the animal. <clears throat> so that is the basics for how we can use sensors and how we can use nose prints and tie that back to a uh, individual animal from a record perspective. And you can just imagine once you have those identity records, what you can, what you can do with that. So what, what we do within our application is start recording data on that animal. We can do observations and an observation might be something that a farmer recognizes when he goes out and looks at his animal. Uh, could be a picture. Um, it could be health records. It could be temperature readings off of the bolus sensor. Um, and we can use other types of sensors for this. We can also use RFID tags. They're all built into the system. So we can use a number of technologies in order to create, create a good combination to help manage your livestock. Another piece that we have is, is farmer registration. And within our platform, we have a good farmer registration platform. We do integrations into national business registration databases. Um, and we can provide a lot of information about a farm. And we record all of this on the blockchain. We take that information and we use some of that information for analytics. Um, you know, an individual can go in and set their goals for their farm. And we use machine learning and we have dozens of machine learning models that help with analysis. We also use farm registration for our geofences and set up geofences on a farm so that we can enable satellite analysis or weather service analysis and combine that with the manual observations, the sensor observations, the um, genetic observations, the veterinary reports, and whatever we may have on animals or on crops. Um, I guess thirdly, one that we're, we're quite proud of is our bank loan crop certificate module. And we've been working on this for a bit now. Um, essentially, we have a loan application platform or insurance application platform, and we partner with other loan providers or insurance companies at the moment. And we can accept a loan application. But what we do beyond that is we create an automated report. So if a farmer goes and borrows a certain number of dollars in order to plant soybean, um, they can now take our application and register the actions that they're taking in preparing the field, 
in fertilizing, in uh, caring for the crops. On top of that, we integrate in satellite analysis, and this is a, a picture in Brazil of an area with soybean. Um, and we can evaluate a whole bunch of features from the satellite and register different elements of performance, combining that with farmer on the ground observation and sensor observation. And we can create a performance score <clears throat> based on how well an individual is producing or caring for their crop. We can also do things like monitor crop rotation, field preparation, um, and you know, from a fraud management perspective, and, and in Brazil, for example, um, they're concerned about people coming in and taking a certain loan and not necessarily applying it for what they said they would, um, or at the end of the season, harvesting the crop and then going back to the insurance and trying to uh, claim that they had poor production for whatever reason on their insurance policy, when in fact, maybe they produced the uh, desired number of, uh, of output. So bushels of corn or, or tons, of, tons of product, whatever product they're growing. So this is a, a functioning um, tool that we have available and we can work with individual banks or insurance companies in order to register loan applications and then create the automated reporting for them so that they can have a weekly report on the performance of that farm. That data can also be shared with the farmer and potentially used to increase the yield. So this is an area where banks now and insurance companies can help the farmer increase their performance or improve their performance while still mitigating risk. <clears throat> An interesting one we're working on right now is methods for um, combating counterfeit inputs. And this is a, another African problem that we're working on. And uh, one of the challenges with inputs is that, um, I guess, unsavory characters will buy a, a bag of high quality seed or buy uh, high quality inputs and they'll they'll cut it and sell it for full price in the market. So they may take a, a 40 pound bag of seed and, and cut it four or eight times, um, loading it with poor quality seed and reducing the potential gain that the farmer has. And, but it is a multiplier on their, their revenue because of the way that they're cutting it using the, the older or the spoiled seed. So we uh, have been working on identification from a machine learning perspective and an imagery perspective and coming up with methods to evaluate seed as it's processed and bagged at, at a factory where it's certified and, and then ways to evaluate the quality of the seed later in the process to assure that you know, the, the good quality seed is following all the way along the supply chain. So there's different ways to do that serialization, packaging and, and evaluation techniques from an imagery perspective. And then we can go back and look at that blueprint or um, registered certification on the blockchain. <clears throat> so, you know, I'll go really quickly. I know we've only got about five minutes here. Another one we have is we can use this data. Um, and this is one we do with a partner of ours. They um, do export certificates and we've used their module within our, our platform, but we can do livestock tracking with those sensors, um, IOT tracking, essentially writing the data to a um, blockchain and send email and SMS notifications 
if an animal gets out of an enclosed area or is too far from home. Um, we can also send those signals via email and SMS to track illness. And all this is recorded on the blockchain. So essentially we create a digital twin for each head of cattle on the blockchain. We can add in all the farm ID and breed ID. Um, and then when the animal sold, and this is one of the things we're working on with a number of nations right now, is to provide a export health certificate to meet the regulatory requirements. All that comes out of the data that has been stored throughout the life of the animal. Um, and then we create a digital footprint that can go with the export compliance documents and the shipping documents and proof of delivery. Um, and essentially, you know, we, we have a program that we're working on right now, which will be tracking millions of animals and tracking the exports from, from uh, specific countries to destination countries to help with the export chain. So I wanted to keep it uh, short from a, a time management perspective and, and hopefully I've done that. I'd like to open the floor to questions. Super work. Uh, definitely, you maintain time for sure. And uh, like, you know, I've been in this field for pretty decent time. I have not seen a stack which is so comprehensive so far. <laughs> you have, well, thank you, you. You have nailed it superly well. Uh, in fact, only some a company which come close to the diverse solutions you are having would be ITK from France. Other than that, I'm, I'm yet to see right uh, such a holistic solution and putting this whole beautiful system which i believe is 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 a beautiful uh, uh, aggregation of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning iot based sensors right provenance and uh, traceability and certification using blockchain we have nailed it pretty well so my question is like you know what's what's your plan to take it to the most challenging yet important market of India, right? Where uh, if we see the cattles, right? You know, we have the same challenges which you have seen in Kenya, but our scale is at least 100 times because we are having the largest population of cattle in the world. And uh, yeah. fortunately, we Indians, we treat um, our cattle as uh, goddesses. So we, we have that, uh, I'll say that uh, a cultural and social aspect as well. We just don't see them as just a, a, a way of getting proteins through milk and meat. We, we, we go a little bit deeper. So my question is that like, you know, uh, we have understood your technology. My question is very much focused on that. When are you bringing this to Asia and specifically India? Well, so we've recently in the last month hired a, a uh, director for the South Asian region. So his name's AJ Sharma. And he is actively working some, some deals right now in India. Um, some opportunities in the dairy industry to start working with with cattle in specific areas of India. Um, and we're also bringing on sales partners for the Indian market um, to take care of because we know the country is so large from a population and a cattle population perspective. We need representation around the country. So we're bringing on some sales partners in India. Um, we've also got some projects working right now in some of your neighboring countries in Pakistan and uh, Bangladesh. Um, and that's all fairly new this year. So um, we are actively expanding in, in Asia. We've, we've got uh, some work going on now in Nepal and uh, just set up an office in Korea. Um, so... Hopefully, we'll see some good projects come through in the next few months, and we'll be spending more time uh, trying to solve challenges in India. And, and we have some very interesting use cases that are coming out at the Indian market. And, you know, you look at large cattle countries, and we're doing some work in Brazil, um, another large cattle country. Maybe they uh, are less dairy-focused and more be focused, but you have very unique challenges. Brazil is um, rainforest management and 
um, you know, feedstock and, and, and export certification. Um, you know, we're hearing in Bangladesh with India near the border that there's a lot of issues with cattle theft, maybe similar to, to Africa. And then, you know, as we talk to the dairies, it's around traceability and, and health monitoring and tying back an individual animal or, an in, or a, a herd of animals into the batching controls that they have for um, dairy traceability. So, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an exciting place to work and uh, we're looking forward to doing more work in, in that area and expanding our business in that area. Yeah, more than happy. I would love to collaborate and bring some of these uh, jewels to India. And uh, fortunately, we have pretty decent experience when it comes to Asia and Africa. And when we talk about India or like, you know, uh, Indonesia, uh, Vietnam. So we, we do have like, you know, a pretty decent exposure to these economies having worked here. My next question is a little bit of on a philosophical level. We have touched a typically a, a holistic farming pieces right, the cattle, uh, the typically agriculture, they go hand in hand, right? And these are a way where you can increase the farmer's earning potential because a farmer without a cattle or a farmer with a cattle, you'll find the economics are very different. At the same time, when we talk about holistic regenerative agriculture, right, the waste for one segment is the input for other. Have you mapped out a, a future course where actually you'll be also talking about like your environmental aspect of how to make this uh, typically the cattle as well as agriculture connected to each other and where you can uh, dovetail the data from one area to another and, and see to it that we can think about more sustainable holistic agriculture ecosystem? So the, the base system is really around, is around data and it's around that extended agriculture to food value chain. And, and we focus on what we call upstream agriculture. So from the soil, to the packing plant. And we're looking at everything that we can do in that area. Um, I mentioned earlier, we have a, a token launching today. And, and one of the objectives with the token is to create a, a crypto ecosystem for um, agriculture. And, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to put technology in the hands of the farmers. And the challenge we have is that we have wealthy farmers who quite easily can adopt the technology. And then we have 475 million smallholder farmers in the world who probably aren't going to spend a lot of money on a platform. But if we can create an ecosystem that ties together technology development firms, um, we're actually launching late this year or early next year um, a platform and we're working with about 10 companies right now, allowing them to build on top of the Demetra platform. So, you know, one I mentioned was this nose print technology company and they have a great technology, but they need a, a means to deliver it to the farmer. They've ver worked really hard to analyze nose prints. Nose print prints play a place in the entire value chain but a farmer isn't likely to buy a nose print app. But if they're using our app, which our goal is to give them for free because we're working on that extended ecosystem, and then we can actually start extracting value from multiple systems. We have so many cool technologies right now where people are bringing us pieces of their own research and they're working with us in order to develop that. We have an incubator contest that we're running this year where we're giving away a $100,000 prize to the best ag, ag tech idea. And we're giving away eight $10,000 prizes into each region. And essentially we're looking for nine firms who wanna come bring their great idea. They own their IP, we don't own their IP. We'll give them a prize and then we'll work with them for three months and help them build the tech on, on our platform. And they can, on a per use basis, gain revenue through our platform or just go and sell it on their own. 
And, and what that's allowing us to do, working with a lot of educational institutions, research companies, corporations, and governments, is start expanding what that upstream value chain and all the connectivity points between crops and, agri- and livestock. Um, you know, we're even bringing in aquaculture. Aquaculture looks like it's a great fit. So we, we just started looking for some good aquaculture people to help us develop an, an aquaculture tool. And, you know, we had some great, great conversations in Pakistan with the deputy minister who's responsible for fisheries and aquaculture there. And, you know, they have a lot of interest around how do they use technology to improve their outputs. And, you know, when I look at crops, you know, we have six or seven crops that we've really done a ton of machine learning work on and know how to analyze those crops. And we're adding more and more crops all the time. But if you look at a smallholder farmer, like the impact you can make is just incredible. Um, you know, the average smallholder farmer, if you use the FAO statistics, consumes 70 to 80 percent of what they plant and they take about 20 percent to market. You know, if we take that farm and we can help them have a 10 percent increase and a 10 percent increase is, is not a huge amount. It's not very difficult to achieve with technology. We're actually doubling the amount of product they take to market or you know, we're getting a 50% increase or greater of what they can take to market. And these are, you know, smallholder farmers have such a great effect on the world. They, you know, 70% of the farms in the world are smallholder farms. They have the most impact on freshwater, the most impact on climate change, the most impact on feed the world, the most impact on all of these big macro problems that the world is trying to solve. And, you know, I love seeing a farmer increase their output 20%, which doubles what they can take to market, which doubles their revenue. And then what do they do with that? They take it right back to their community and they help their community. And, you know, it it gives me so much excitement to go and work with companies like that or small businesses who are farmers and see what they can do because a little bit of technology helps millions and millions of people and you know the the farmers the smallholder farmers tend to be the most giving people in the world and i fully fully agree with you john on this and uh, i wish you all the best for uh, your token launch as well as uh, wish you all the best for your uh, uh, rolling out your solution in this part of the world. Uh, it was a pleasure having you. And uh, I, I, I would always say that, like, you know, uh, I can see uh, Dimitra becoming an operating system for EgTech going forward, on which uh, all the startups and uh, new ideas can germinate and can, like, you know, use it. Thanks a lot for your time. And it was a pleasure having you.